Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, the legislature returns. We're going to have a legislative preview with, well, what, two-thirds of our all-star team? And then Terry Fitzpatrick is here. We're going to get an energy update, Marcella Shale, and more. All of that when Pennsylvania Newsmakers returns. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, Gene Barr from the Chamber is here and Jim Redmond from the Hospital and Health System. Where's Fred Anton? The, uh, the, hi, Fred. What? Where yeah, is Fred's he? not here. The other, <laughs> well, he's coming up. He'll be on another program. He couldn't make it. All right. Well, as, as both of you know, because that's what you do for a living, you follow the legislature very carefully. Uh, Gene, let me start with you. What an agenda. Not just the large number of issues, but the significance oh, yeah. of these issues. It's, it's the likes of which we haven't seen in decades, I think, given I'm talking about the, the magnitude of them. Go ahead. Absolutely. I mean, you've got the reapportionment. You've got all of that. You've got Marcellus impact fee. Right. You've got privatization. You've got school vouchers. You've got the unemployment comp problem. Right. You've transportation got transportation finance, finance the, the, the whole deal. There's, there's everything out there, uh, and it's going to be a very interesting fall. And, Jeff, and a go very limited care. number some, of days that they're going to be in yeah, session. Yeah, how many days? Is it like three, four weeks or something? something like that. You mean that's all they're days. in session? Right. Something all like fall. They, they well, never mind. It's Monday to Wednesday and yeah. not every week. So That's yeah. right. they got Columbus Day holiday, then we have Election Day, then we have Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And, yeah. Oh, man. Well, look, you guys are veterans. You've been through the... Can, Jim, can they get this... I mean, in the, if you had a guess, I'm going to put you both on the spot. Give me the three things you think they will do. Well, I think they have to do the redistricting. And, oh, we, okay, redistricting. Uh, state, and uh, certainly the state legislative part. The, uh, you know, congressional, they could put off the January. Go ahead. Um, I don't see them reaching agreement on the transportation funding issue. There seems to be a real difference between the House and the Senate on, on the school choice, school choice. Is, issue. Um, and maybe they get to the Marcella Shale yeah. issue in the commission report that Gene served on. How about sell the liquor stores? That's a big, that's Look, a big deal. The House Majority Leader wants this done. <clears throat> we believe that it ought to get done. My folks believe that beer ought to be part of it, to be honest with you, but there's really no reason for the, the state. You wouldn't like lobby and stop it for beer, would you? I, I don't think so, but our view is that we need to move towards privatization. And I, don't, I mean, I don't see us saying if you don't, if it's not 100 percent, we're going to stop it. But the reality is, the state shouldn't be in that business. Yeah. All right. Any big health care issues on the table? Well, there are we can get into detail in another segment, yeah. but just get, tick them off. There are a couple of issues that the state has to address as it relates to the Affordable Care Act, right. the federal health reform. Um, those issues relate to. Um, oversight of insurance companies on, on rates, on appeals, and also the big one, which is the health insurance exchange, right. which has to be in place by um, 2013. Okay. Let's, let's, uh, okay. let's take a couple of these and get into detail. Jim, or uh, Gene, uh, I'm going to have Terry Fitzpatrick's coming on, you know, the former PUC uh, uh, member, and he'll, he'll talk a little bit about maybe some proposed legislation mm -hmm. to the... Uh, to uh, Marcella Shale. Right. You were on the commission, however, the big debate is whether there'll be some kind of a tax mm -hmm. or impact fee. What's your best guess? I think there will be an impact fee. The commission recommended one. The commission also recommended that it be targeted to those communities mm -hmm. where we can determine the impact. Interestingly enough, even some of the local elected officials there aren't crazy about mm -hmm. an impact fee because in their communities they believe that the companies are taking care of the problem, yeah. so if you go with an impact fee, they're not certain how it's going to help them. But I do believe by the time they leave here in November, December, there's going to be some type of impact but fee. But a third of the uh, a third of the members on your commission were, you know, had connections, relations, or were part of the energy sure. a community, Correct. and they supported the impact fee, Correct. right? Correct, they did. So, and Absolutely. so most of the big en the energy companies expect there'll be an impact fee. Is that a safe state? I would think that that's most, probably most maybe right. Be, but I mean, they're many not do. crazy about it being tied to some kind of severance tax. That is, it would escalate depending on production. Okay. Uh, but they're willing to say, look, let's take a look at what it's doing there. Let's provide some assistance to these communities. And I think they're willing to do that. All right. Over the years in which you know, you've, you've been lobbying, and that's, that's a good many on health care, but you 
How would you describe the relationships that exist between, you know, Republicans and Democrats? I mean, I remember a time when there was a lot more congeniality or things as tense as they seem to be from the outside. I mean, it's not to say that they're not friends, but is all this polarization that we... Jim, do you think that's taken a root here, that it's well, not... Well, dealing, we're dealing with a new administration, yeah, and they're still, thing, right? they're still getting their sea legs underneath them. Sure. We're dealing with new... Um, Leaders in the House, in particular, uh, that you know they have not been in the majority for a number of years, and they're still working things out. So yeah, there's there's still um, relationship issues and agenda issues that uh, are pretty different. Yeah, that's true. All right, look, we're going to run to a uh, break. When we come back, we're going. I want to ask them a, a little bit about whether they th what they think about school choice. We've got uh, Gene mentioned transportation funding. It's a huge issue. We'll take care of that and more when we return. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by ReconnectPA.org supporting a comprehensive transportation funding solution and by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association business in Pennsylvania is our business hi welcome back I'm we're talking with Gene Barr and and uh, Jim Redman two-thirds of the all-star panel Fred Anton bailed on us now he'll be here he's coming up uh, on a subsequent show all right let's talk a little bit about the uh, school choice uh, Gene Barr controversial it's been tried on a number of occasions bill in the Senate by Senator Pecola to uh, create private school choice, you know, in lowest per low performing uh, schools and, you know, later to entire school districts and maybe expand mm -hmm. it to the entire state. It's having a tough time. It's tough because I think there's two, three different components. There's also a lot of opposition to it, obviously, from, <clears throat> from the labor perspective. I think there's a good chance you'll see something, even if it's increased education improvement tax credits, which have been around for a while. There's a lot of support for that. And maybe you'll get some more pilots. But our view is that, look, we've we got an education system that needs work. Mm -hmm. We believe it needs competition. This is one way of putting mm -hmm. competition in the system. But a lot of rural lawmakers that I've chatted with are not wild about it because they don't think they can avail themselves of the bill because they don't have any private schools. Well, and that's that part of the problem. And here's the other reality. If we don't do something soon, the real viable alternative in many cases is the parochial school system. Yeah. And when you look at what's happening in places like Philadelphia where they're closing due to lack of enrollment, if we don't right. do something soon, you're not going to have a viable option in a lot of places. All right. One of the other controversial issues, and, you know, we have a number, I forget the exact number, 20 or some cities that are in Act 47, that's a bill that allows them to go into distress and they get some assistance, mostly technical and legal and other kinds of help from the state. But the city of Harrisburg seems to be heading for something that's not occurred in my memory, maybe not ever, Jim Redman, and that is a complete takeover by the state. Is that a possibility? Boy, it cer certainly seems so. Um, you know, the city council has rejected uh, several, on several times, I guess yeah. three times mm -hmm. already, uh, the proposal from Mayor Thompson and uh, legislation is uh, being developed uh, in the legislature and the governor's office uh, so, to look at this. So you think the, the state legislature and the governor are serious about taking over the city of Harrisburg? Well, I don't know whether they're serious about taking <clears throat> it over. I just saw, I believe they just shipped some additional money this week so the city could make payroll out of state dollars. You know, it's a serious situation. But that doesn't help them out of the it long term. It doesn't help them out of the long term. And they're debt, not the right? only one that has issues. And in fact, I'm hearing more and more from certain mayors who say we need to take a relook at things like Act 111. Yeah. Okay, well, look, let's, let's talk, uh, let's switch gears for the remaining few minutes that we have. <clears throat> One of the things that we hear a lot about is legal reform, apology legislation. Jim, uh, talk about that. Sure. <clears throat> um, legislation was passed uh, by, by the House that uh, permits uh, health care providers to have conversations with patients and family members when there are adverse events. And uh, the legislation uh, would provide uh, for immunity and discovery of that information so that health care providers uh, don't feel that, right. that they have to withhold information. Similar legislation has passed in about 35 other right. states. It's now pending b before the state senate. 
And uh, we, along with the Chamber and the Medical Society and a whole bunch of other groups, are pushing to get that legislation well, well, through the well, Senate. <coughs> Gene Barr, what do you think? Is it going to pass? I would certainly hope so. It's yeah. one of those things that while it's, you know, we don't, uh, you know, uh, it's not one that the business has a direct relationship. Right. But the reality is anything we can do to help right. hold down health care costs yeah, I mean, is going to be a positive, you know, we can so argue, we support it. You know, you can argue about... Uh, Medical liability and how you know to what extent who's you know the proportion gets shared you know if, mm -hmm. if somebody's but it certainly does it seems why not let a doctor have an honest conversation Absolutely. with a patient does that make any I mean on the SERP you're who's opposing a, who's opposing this uh, the trial lawyers really right. right trial bar doesn't want this. And it's not just when a doctor's made a mistake. It's just, look, you go in and yeah. he might tell you there's a one in four chance yeah. something happens. Well, that one in four chance happens. They like to be able to, hey, right. I'm sorry, it didn't happen. It didn't go the way we all hoped it would. And that still It's common sense. And, and still, if there's a legal problem, you know, God forbid. They can find I mean, it. It's still there, no, right? It's still there. It's they can still find there. it. They just can't use that statement. That's all. Okay. Now, before we, I let you go, I want to ask you... Uh, uh, everybody is sort of waiting for these the insurance exchange in this state and other states. I read a report just this week that says, well, they're moving a little slow in places in some of the states. That has to be in place so that the Affordable Health Care Act, even though it's controversial, can be implemented. Am I right or wrong? The, right. A, a number of states uh, are, have been slow to move in this direction. Pennsylvania is not alone. But Pennsylvania, under uh, the Corbyn administration, has been thoroughly evaluating right. this. Uh, they're in the process of reviewing a, a study of, about sort of the, the, the cost of infrastructure to make this happen. I think there's agreement, though, Terry, that um, the, the approach that Pennsylvania and other states will take is a more like what Utah has done, sort right. of a, 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 a minimal approach in providing this information uh, uh, to the public so that they can purchase uh, health insurance under the, uh, the Affordable Care Act. Okay, thanks for the great update. All right, Terry Fitzpatrick is coming. We're going to talk about, whoa, amendments maybe to Marcella Shale. We'll see where that goes and the big issue of restoration of electric and gas service as a result of, what did we have, a flood? A huge flood throughout the northeastern part of the state and a good part of Pennsylvania. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, Terry Fitzpatrick is here. He's the president and CEO of the Energy Association of Pennsylvania. He's our go-to guy when we want to talk about energy and related matters. He was also a member of the Public Utilities Commission for a period of time. Well, look, let's talk, first of all, you know, we had this uh, horrific flood and a good bit of Pennsylvania was, uh, you know, affected by it and a number of folks lost uh, uh, electric and gas service. G give us an estimate of the overall damage in that sense that, Pen that Pennsylvanians incurred. Well, we had two very bad storms, uh, really natural disasters here recently, hurricanes Irene and then Lee. Right. Um, actually, there was more broader impact from, from Hurricane Irene because of the winds, which caused a lot of uh, electric utility uh, customers to go off. And I think at the height of that, we had about uh, three quarters of a million customers that were off. Um, but they came on, they came back quickly for the most part. Uh, Hurricane Lee, with its uh, torrential rains that affected the eastern part of the state, or really more the central part of the state in the, in the northeast, uh, th there wasn't, weren't as many people out there, maybe around 30,000 or so, but some of those are harder to get back on because of the flood damage. There wasn't as much wind with that, but there was, it, it was the flood damage that caused a lot of, uh, well, you would have water and wastewater customers out. You had boiled water advisories for the water industry. Among the industries that I represent, uh, you had electric customers out, and you also had uh, a significant number of natural gas customers out because of the flooding that inundated right. the, uh, the equipment. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, just as an observer, I mean, you know, we had sort of nonstop news coverage of it, as right. you would expect from all the, a lot, most of the television stations, certainly in the affected areas. And I thought the responders and everybody did a pretty commendable job. I mean, there was some loss of life, and that's, uh, you, know, ter uh, you know, terrible tragedy. But I thought all in all, the responses by everybody, not, not just the utilities, but the, you know, the first responders, the police and the fire folks, and the, most of the citizenry seemed to react. You know, you didn't read a lot about looting and, you know, a couple of people here and there, you know, we get mm -hmm. picked up for doing, you know, quite frankly, stupid right. things. Was that your general impression? Now, you pay attention to this. Right. I think for the most part, something like this pulls people together and brings yeah. out the best in them. Sometimes the worst, but more often the best. Uh, the the hardworking people with our companies, the linemen, the natural right. gas folks that go out to restore service, we work with the PUC. The PUC has dedicated people to who man the emergency operations center along with uh, the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency and other agencies mm -hmm. to keep track of this. We work with them to tell them how we're doing with right. our customers that are out. They sometimes can direct us. when The first thing we try to do when we have outages is get is look to public safety. Right. Get, get, get the hospitals, the police stations, the, the fire departments back on. And after that, we go for the biggest bang for the buck. Wherever you can get people on more quickly, you prioritize according to that. Right. Well, all right, let's, let's shift gears a little bit. I want to, there are two other big subjects I want to talk with you about. Let's start with the Marcellus Shale. You know, it's a huge issue, as you know. It, uh, Gene Barr was just on. He was right. on the commission. He thinks there'll be an impact fee. You know, the governor was you know, said during the course of his campaign, no tax, no fee, but right. he, he seems to be open to it. It now looks like mm -hmm. that might happen. But, but there are other considerations that don't often get a lot of press related to Marcellus Shale. Talk about what some of them are and what legislation might be forthcoming that would have some effect. Well, first of all, I, I want to say that I represent electric and gas utilities, right. and the Marcellus is important to, to the utilities and to their customers, and this is something that doesn't get discussed as often. Uh, but that, having that kind of a resource and that kind of production of energy right in our own backyard mm -hmm. does help to keep the, the price of natural gas down for customers and the price of electricity down, too, because wholesale electricity prices are largely tied to natural gas because of its growing importance in generating electricity. So it, th what I'm trying to say is that among the benefits of the Marcellus are benefits to consumers in Pennsylvania. You have the jobs, you know, you have the additional right. taxes that are coming in, even without an impact right. for your severance tax. But it helps to keep energy costs. So, I, so it's very important to, to the people of Pennsylvania for that reason, okay. too. Well, yeah, we're going to run to a break. But there's also the environmental concerns. I mean, not, Correct. I think that's something that ev you know, everyone need, needs to be concerned about. Okay, we're going to talk about, you know, potential legislation and also, you know, what's going to happen with uh, building our utility infrastructure so we have uh, sources of power. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long term care. Welcome back to the program. I'm talking with Terry Fitzpatrick. He was on the PUC, now is with the uh, Energy Association of PA, Pennsylvania. All right, Be before I get to another Marcellus show, I, I, I want to ask you something about this building infrastructure and how important right. that is. Right. Very important. And you hear this on your show all the time, I know, you know transportation infrastructure, yep. for example. But, but also with utility infrastructure, uh, we don't think there's a crisis there, but we want to make sure we're doing everything we can to modernize that more quickly. And uh, we have legislation that we're working on in the Pennsylvania General Assembly uh, that would take care of this and would provide incentives to, to improve infrastructure more quickly by reducing some of the regulatory lag, the delay we have in recovering the costs of, uh, of pil yeah. building these infrastructure projects. Now, now, when you say infrastructure here, are you talking about the ability to provide energy to the citizens of our state? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, I'm talking about, to be very specific, pipes, wires, and poles. 
Thank and, God. and substations too. Things that we too. all take for granted, right? Things <laughs> that we really do take for granted, and uh, th they need to be maintained and improved, and, and we're looking for ways to be able to do that more quickly. Um, also an issue with, uh, with wastewater, by the way, which would be covered under this legislation. Now, th I want to interrupt you here because I want to pin you down on this. If, this do if you don't get all of this, what does it mean? Outages, higher payments to, to consumers, uh, delays in service. I mean, it, are these all potentials if the if this infrastructure is not uh, dealt with? In the long run, there's a potential for that sort of okay. thing. I, I don't want to portray this as a crisis and, and suggest we're not providing reasonable service now. I think we are, but I think we could do even better um, if we can get these incentives in place uh, so that we can we can recover these costs more quickly. Isn't the point to avoid a crisis? The point is to avoid, <laughs> yes, and you know, you, you deal with this on your show yeah. all the time. You deal, the problems that are put off and right. aren't dealt with until they okay. become a crisis, they're harder to solve. We don't want to do that. We want to take care of this on a timely basis okay. and avoid those problems in the first place. Back, back to Marcella Shale. Sure. You know, a lot of, in a poll that I did a, a couple of weeks ago, we got sort of folks equally divided between they understand the importance of Marcella Shale and energy to jobs and all of that, but they're also very much concerned about the environment, about equally divided. Right. Well, and, and rightfully so that they'd have some concern. I mean, I grew up in the anthracite region. I, see what, I saw firsthand growing right. up what can happen when extraction isn't done right. But, but I really do think that, that it is being done right now. I mm -hmm. think there's been a lot of attention to this under both the Rendell administration and the Corbett administration. But things can be done better, and some recommendations for that were part of the recommendations of the Marcellus Shale Advisory Commission. Things like setbacks of, of the uh, drilling sites from streams, mm -hmm. um, some other issues. So I think that will be part of the discussion as well. How can we, how can we really improve that? To, to provide the utmost confidence for the uh, citizens of Pennsylvania that this is being done right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have about a min minute minute left. You, you follow this. I mean, this Marcella Shell thing. We, I was talking with Gene and Jim, you know, in an earlier segment. I mean, you, you know, th this is a pretty important thing. You know, the impact fee. I mean, I think most people, the uh, citizens of our state, expect it. You know, they want it. As I mentioned before, lots of folks in the you know, in the natural gas industry, understand and expect us. What's your sense about what will happen when the legislature returns? High priority, we get done? I think it's a high priority. Whether it'll get done, I guess I'm not sure of that. I think there's a better chance now. I think we seem to be moving towards consensus. I mean, this was the governor's advisory commission that exactly. came in and recommended the impact fee. I think that really helps to, to move it forward here. All right, well, look, thanks for the great update. You'll come back, you know, when there's something that we need to know. You'll, you're our man on this. Thank All you. right, as always, thanks for watching Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and stay well.